seem like the real development time was about what it was. No, the real development time really was like 14 years. What happened originally was with uh, 3D Realms, George Broussard and his crew, was they wanted to stay cutting edge. You know, they wanted it to be as state-of-the-art as it could. Game engines kept being... Right. They had to keep redeveloping it, re... re I, I don't know how coding works, but they had to re-change the game for every new game engine. And then when uh, Randy Pitchford and Gearbox took over, in uh, 2000, late 8, 2008, 2009, they said, okay, all the artwork is pretty much done. Let's just wrap it up and, and make it a little more interactive. They came up with the ideas of, you know, uh, picking up the turd, making it more interactive, changing it. instead of having health, you have ego, which is pretty cool for a dude. And uh, I think also, by the way, if I can go back for just a second to so why some of the reviews were not good was because they wanted... Duke Nukem Forever to be exactly like Duke Nukem 3D, where you can have all the weapons all the time. No, you only get two weapons at a time in Duke Forever. And uh, they liked key cards, but as Duke says, key cards. I don't need no fucking key cards. <laughs> and the ego meter, instead of having health, uh, to interact with things in the game to drive up the ego level to make you stronger, drinking beer making you tougher. Pretty cool, in my opinion. <laughs>